All right, hey everybody. Uh, having a little bit of a technical difficulty here with uh, getting things started. I actually was trying to bring on Ryan uh, from Castlemania Games, and he was on a call, and then we just dropped calls. So I'm trying to recall him right now, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we can get him back on here and try to set that back up so that we can talk to him here today as we do our show are you there can you hear me ryan okay well i can't hear anything i'll leave the call there <laughs> It's funny, we've been trying to like set this up for like the last 10 minutes. We had a little bit of a uh, plan. Let's see, where was the other camera? So I got that camera. That camera. Okay, so this is... Uh, let's see if we can get him back on here. We'll just see if he comes back. If he does, he'll show up down there in the corner where the opposite Sony si signal, sig ugh, signal is. Otherwise, we'll just have to go on and... Uh, just tread on with the work we're doing today, which is this lovely, that's right, this is probably the biggest you'll ever see this little PVM screen in action. It's um, the 5041Q. All right, so let's just do a quick check here. I see that my audio for my microphone is coming in fine. Um, everything else looks to be coming in fine, it says on my feedback and uh it's just i lost ryan on the call and i'm trying before we just jump into it i'm trying to call him so let's just see if we can get him on here i'll, I'll give it a couple more tries before we give up i'm going to put you back on the main camera here <laughs> and uh try to get a call with him because i really did want to have him on and I know his time is limited. Um, so anyway, I'll send him one more DM. <sighs> anyway, okay. That's what you got to love about live streaming, folks. Anything can happen. And we're used to it already because, you know, what have I got? A, a good... Good amount of shows kind of under my belt to start with today. So it's not the first time I've had some technical difficulties, but I'm here to talk to you about this Sony PVM, which was unboxed in yesterday's stream. Hey, Stadium Arts, Master Safer, PO17, Raceroni, Harry, Martin, Overclockwise, Belmont. Just some quick shout outs to everybody in the chat. Hierme Solda, Tony Escobar. Thank you, everybody who's coming in today and joining me on this special treat of a show. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, I'm sorry. I do uh I do want to just wait a minute and see if we do get a chance to get back online with Ryan really before I start tearing into things. So Webb T Rex, welcome. Uh, while I'm kind of waiting on him, maybe I'll find some, oh, some, uh, charming background music. And I do have a little bit of a story I can tell you guys that's happened to me. Oh, let's just start a little playlist of some background music. Oh, look at this. How wonderfully Western and make sure it's not too loud. So. Yeah, he dropped call, like, right when I hit live. So, unfortunately, and then I've called two, three times since, and we haven't been able to reconnect. But, anyway, that's how it goes sometimes. I'm waiting. If he does send back to, uh, to me, I will, of course, jump in, and we can uh, start the regular program we had planned. And... Just going to keep an eye on the Discord 
call, no no update or response. I wish I had some better 16 at music. Honestly, that's the one thing I didn't prepare for was the background music. Maybe we get something a little more jazzy, soothing coming up here, but all right, so I went uh, or well, today is officially the last day of school, supposed to be the last day of school for my kids um, in elementary school and middle school. And I had picked up my daughter from school yesterday and uh, she was fine, but she went outside and was playing around the background music or <laughs> yeah, background music, playing around in the backyard and she um she came back inside and i noticed that one of her eyes was really red and uh so super red and i put some eye drops in there with her and she went to bed she woke up this morning and her poor thing her whole red, her whole right eye was completely swollen shut so she didn't get to go to school on the very last day of school which is probably like the only day most kids are excited to go to back to school so she uh I had to go rush over to a clinic with her this morning. Of course, they told me she had pink eye and it was going to both eyes. So she's upstairs home with me. But um, the only really interesting thing about this like story is that I had to <laughs> I had a plan this morning. I'm supposed to travel and I needed to get some new tires put on uh, my SUV, which is an Audi and it has like a really odd tire size and they always have to special order it. Uh, but this time I kind of needed them quick. I need a new, new set. So I go to this tire shop locally. I call them, they can get the set on and they got them on today already. But, um, I made the appointment for them to put the tires on this morning. I was like, I'll be there. I'll drop this Audi off to you guys. Uh, this morning and I said maybe I do it before they opened up so I Go get my car and well at first I had to take my kids to the clinic with my wife and I was like well while we're over here Why don't I just drop the car off to the tire place? So we did that and um, I Go in the tire place and again, this is like me a new customer. Okay first impressions I go in there's nobody working in, in the little office, right? No one in there. It's empty. They have like an advertisement wall behind the desk and it's really modernized in there, but a little shop area. And then you can see over into the work bays, which they probably have five work bays that they do all kinds of auto servicing, not just, but they're tires. They're called tire. So they're called something tire. So I go in there and I'm waiting for a good, I don't know, three or four minutes just standing there. And then finally I see a bunch of guys starting to walk around in the shop bays. And, you know, I'm just looking, I'm like, oh, well, these guys are probably just the techs, you know, the, the mechanics, because they all look like they've been working on machines all day. So they are, and it's only, I mean, it was nine in the morning at this point, nine fifteen. So, um, I finally see a bunch of them start to get together and one of them comes out and he's like the scrawny looking one. And uh, he walks out and he sees me standing there and he just starts coughing like crazy. And he's like, <laughs> and he goes like, he's a young guy too, probably 20s. He's like, excuse me. And then he leans over the garbage can and hocks a huge loogie into it. And then he's like, so are we going to get this off your truck? That's what he says to me. And I'm like, what? What are you even talking about? And, and he looks at me like I'm crazy. And he's like, wait, what are you here for? And I was like, I had a tire appointment to get new tires put on my car. And he's like, oh, whoa, hang on, hang on. And this other guy walks in and he's like, not much better than this other guy. Hey, buddy, how's it going? How you doing, dude? And uh, I'm like, hey, I'm, uh, I'm okay. He's like, what, what are you here for? And I'm like, I had called about the tires for the Audi. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I've been waiting for you. And I was like, yeah, my kid had pink eye. What can you say? I got, I had to come. I came a little late. And uh, he's like, oh, I need it for about an hour. 
like okay you know you take the put the tires on it and uh but <laughs> i was really like nervous to drop my car off to him <laughs> After the way they started, I was like, do I really want to buy? I don't know, these are not cheap tires. This tire for this Audi is like uh, a lot of money. Um, we're looking at like, I think they're like, I don't even know. I haven't paid the bill yet. I mean, installed, they're probably like four or 500 bucks a piece. I don't think they're 500. That's not true. They're going to be about. 400 a piece I bet installed and with taxes and everything but I was like what the heck you know I'm a new customer I'm coming by this expensive tire and uh, you send out the crazy people uh, so anyway I haven't got the car back yet so we'll we'll see what happens when I go get it and I know that uh, race asked me if I and hey shout out to Abe's games and skates Cody dragon rude Steven Schneider and uh, race listen i know that <laughs> we always talk about costco on like twitter and i went there but the problem is is they didn't have this size in stock they they only had two in i have to leave and uh by a certain date and this was the only place i could pretty much get it right away done i mean one of a few but less cd than the other ones i thought maybe i was wrong We'll see. Um, hopefully, they, they at least put the tires on because that would be pretty unsafe if they didn't. Yeah, not. I hope it's not a chop shop, but they, yeah, they wouldn't get very far in that car. But all right, so we've been going for about a good 15 minutes. Unfortunately, I think we probably just have to wait for another time with Ryan. I'm not, uh, I'm not seeing anything back. But yeah, I wanted to go there first. I tried to. I actually went there twice to double check to make sure. Because I would have saved probably 200 bucks too. And had not to deal with crazy people. And Costco says they'll have your tires done. You can literally walk around the store one time and your tires are actually done. All right. Yeah, they don't. Um, I used to use discount tire too, PO17. I never, uh, but they don't have them now where I moved to. So, all right, guys, let's uh, let's just check it out. First off, I'm on the main camera, again, we're looking at <laughs> we're looking at the uh, Sony PVM five zero four one Q, and uh, we're gonna we're we're gonna do some servicing to it. I got a cap kit that I think's gonna work for it. So if I go to overhead here, let's switch over to that for a second. This is the same cap kit. Oh, look at this. Program's got me. Uh, always something. Hang on for a second, folks. There we go. Back to where I want to be. Okay. That way you don't have to look at it upside down. This is a uh, Superman save on pads cap list for the 8041. I did make a change because I noticed something wasn't right on it. I'd like to do this kit. And then we're also going to do the, um, which I've already got my tackle box here built with all my replacement parts in here. And then I'm going to replace the potentiometers here that control the color on NTSC there and uh, maybe even PAL but these need to be changed on the color board to prevent color loss on NTSC or on uh, composite or S video signals and then we have to add this little guy between them we'll talk more about that when that comes we get to that so again here's the pvm i got another super close-up i'm just going to grab it here in a second and then i'll probably have to go back to the face cam and uh zoom out a little bit and we'll just kind of work on it here while we tear it apart and ooh, that's in not out 
So let me go grab this guy. And here we are. And I just got a text on my phone. Let's see what it says. It could be from Ryan or it could be from the missus. Alright, he says he's back. Let me try to call him. Let me try to call him. And we'll see if he can uh, hook up with us here. Let me turn my... Um, it sh He's asking if it's awkward. Well, I don't really know. Let's see. Let's just try to call him. And uh, while we do that, I'm going to pause the background music, everybody. This is what the fun part is about doing a live show, right? We've got the monitor here. Now, if you wonder what I'm looking at, I'm uh, looking at my Discord call. Uh, let's see if I could start the video call. Are you there? Let's see. All right. I think you're here. I'm here. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Okay. Great. This is good. This is good. Let me get you just resituated. Everybody's cool. It's no big problem. We will go over. Well, which one should we go? We should go this one probably now because it's time to look at. the PVM and see we had you I had you where you weren't so large as before but now we'll just have to make you smaller so we'll be the same size because I wanted to zoom in the camera out just a touch all right well good timing let me welcome in Ryan from Castlevania games and uh let me turn his audio up just a little bit Ryan how are you doing today I'm doing well Doing well. Good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you too. It's been uh, it's been almost a year now. Yeah. Yeah. I think the last time we saw each other was probably in Connecticut. Yep, that would have been absolutely true. I've been doing good since then. Um, there's a lot of people in the chat. Some people came over, and uh, yeah, they were very happy to have you here. So. Cool. Pull up the chat on my end. Yeah, yeah, we're, um, uh, right, so, yeah, while you were off, I was just killing the time by taking apart the PVM, or pulling it down here, but, um, uh, kind of just look through this thing, and before we get too deep into that, we can have a little chat here, let's set this up like that so it kind of stays right there, it's a good armrest. It's a little warm <laughs> but uh, yeah so what's uh what's going on with you are you going to plan to go to connecticut again you think i am trying to make that happen um that would be great i would love to go back and if i do i'm gonna stop in uh, i'm gonna fly into new york first uh, that's kind of the rough idea for that and then uh drive in that way okay yeah yeah i don't know um i was talking to a bunch of people unfortunately i'm not thinking it's going to be real tough for me to make it there this year um just because my wife works at a school now and that's like the back to school week right before that all right yeah. for her and my kids so it's like oh my gosh so i kind of had to just wait and make it a last minute thing if it happens during the weekend uh but anyway uh what else has been going on what you got uh what's been happening you know over at uh, castlemania games lately uh things have been busy uh, a lot of stuff is starting to show up uh which seems to just come in waves uh, which is great 
um, uh, you know, because we're able to get a lot of things out and make room and get people taken care of and that sort of thing, uh, which we definitely uh, are looking forward to doing. Uh, this particular next week we're going into, we are, uh, well, a couple of us are going to go down to Vegas for the um, licensing expo. So I'll be keeping my eye open for opportunities to do um, some cool things there. Um, I have some ideas. So, uh, you know, it's always a great thing. It's a good networking opportunity and lots of cool things to come. But uh, yeah, so right now, I mean, we're just busy, busy, busy every single day. Um, literally seven days a week shipping and kidding and assembling and programming things. So it's, it's been kind of a whirlwind of a, a year so far. We're already in June. Yeah, I know. I feel you. Yeah. Summertime is already here. It seems like the year has just like exploded by fast, especially this mm -hmm. year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, I actually had to laugh because the last time we did get together, I remember you were selling a couple of the games that you had available that were extras. It was, um, I'm looking yeah, at yeah. A, the guy, Eris, right? Is that yeah, how you say that? And, yeah, and uh, um, Mega Man Wily Wars. Right. And so, yeah, I picked up, I remember picking up a couple copies of it and then laughing because you're like, man, uh, was well, like Guy Aries sold out in like an hour and, or a couple hours. And, and then I looked on eBay and people were trying to basically list them before they left the hotel because oh, I think you were selling them for lower than the prices that they were actually listed for on the secondhand market. Right. Well, that's what we do. So when um, games come in uh, that are pre-orders like that, or really anything um, where there's any like limitation around its quantity, um, I'll hold back, you know, a case or two of a given title, and uh, mostly that's for just warranty um, type of stuff. And then uh, once a sufficient period has gone by, uh, we bring them to conventions. And we sell them there. Um, depending on the inventory level, I might take them to um, uh, take them to the website as well. But uh, we just sell them for what we originally sold them for. And and I know full well that they're going for double, triple, whatever on eBay. Um, so right now, uh, actually tomorrow, uh, the Ballast collection shows up, and I know that's going to be one. That, that that's going to happen to, um, similar to Toplin, where um, it's like a complete box set. And yeah. People who yeah. missed it or whatever, um, they're going to want to get that one later. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be tough, you know. But we we'll be bringing them to if if I go to Retro World, we'll be bringing them there. Um, uh, certainly have them at Portland, that kind of a thing. It's just a tough thing, you know, it's with, with those limited pressings of things. But I'm getting ready to go to um, Portland as well. Okay. Uh, which getting getting some of these booths ready, you know, um, is taking more and more time to kind of plan and prep properly. Um, so you've got to get all your, your signage and all this kind of stuff. And then if you're going somewhere... Um, Far away, you've got to think about the logistics of getting your stuff there inexpensively and getting it back. Actually, um, took a whole bunch of stuff to um, the Milwaukee Classic Gaming Expo, which was the last weekend of March, kind of weekend leads into the very beginning of April. And I actually just received a lot of my booth signage. Uh, back from freight so that that was a little bit of a learning curve on that one I'm glad i didn't have anything that i needed to bring that stuff to right away um but traveling across the country to set up a booth can be a little bit of a challenge uh, nope. but that particular convention i would highly recommend um, yeah the milwaukee one um, okay I, I, it's portland to run for its money 
I think oh, I really? had more fun. Yeah, more fun at the the Portland or excuse me, the Milwaukee um, Classic Gaming because it's a it's a um, it, it's it's at least has the footprint of of um, Portland in terms of square footage. Uh, but they've got so much extra stuff going on that once the vendor floor is closed, it's it's they've got the free play arcade stuff going on. But they've just literally got like a party going on on all levels of the convention center. In every room you dive into, it's like they're featuring some you know type of aspect of our our culture. With whether it's like there was bands doing covers of. Uh, video game soundtracks, or uh, there were rooms where people were demonstrating products, you know, um, things that they were working on, or, you know, de- developers that were working on things. So it was kind of like every corner you went around, there was something cool going on. Um, and, you know, that, that was cool. And also to the fact that it was connected to the hotel. So you can kind of like leave the vendor floor it changed, freshen up, whatever, and then you're you didn't really leave the convention, you're still there. You just go back downstairs and it's still you're still there. Uh so a really nice setup there. I'd highly recommend that one. That's cool. I've not um the one I've just gone to basically a couple of conventions and I only go uh, last year I went to two and I, that's like the most I can almost schedule. How many how many are you going to now? You'd say during the year then, like how many will you go to in 2023? In 2023, I'll have gone to uh, CES, which is really more of an industry focused um, convention. It's nothing like what I just talked about at all. Um, it's it's really there for people who have, have like a business reason to be there. Uh, there is some media uh, presence there, um, but you don't really, there's no like fans of like, gaming or, or, or really anything uh, going on there because CES covers really everything. Um, they have a gaming hall, but they also have a hall for new vehicles coming out. They have a hall for home automation. They have a hall for 3D printing, so on and so forth. That takes up the entire like Vegas board. It's not in one building. It's in all of them. You know, Pretty much there's something going on with CES. Uh, so that's a big one that's in january um then we went to milwaukee in march um planning to go to retro world in august and then portland will be um in october and that's probably it for this year although i do have um a little bit of a different schedule planned uh for next year because i want to start getting um visiting some of the states like in the south like texas um, um Southeast, uh, you know, I want to go to like too many games, Southeast Game Exchange, stuff like that as well. So we'll just see. Yeah, the other one, uh, well, the one I've done the most is in where I used to live around Nashville, Tennessee area. And actually, I was laughing because it was, it kind of started off as something a little bit smaller, more focused on like pinball and arcade. And, uh, then each year they keep adding more and more and more um, stuff. And even this year, I noticed where like my life and gaming was announced that they were going, and uh, a couple other people that are you know the normal people we see. And I was laughing. I was like, oh, I didn't even know you guys were going to be at this show. Usually, it's not. There might be one or two other people uh, that I see at that show that comes to it from out of town. But they're trying yeah. to grow. I, so I imagine there's a bunch of other. That that kind of a uh, event, some of those still seem to do really, really well for like foot traction, right? I mean, have you seen there's? Do you think there's still a lot? I mean, noticed a lot of people. I know it's probably not crazy levels, but what do you think about w- Milwaukee? Was there a lot, like always, a lot oh. of people around? I mean, I mean, it was just like I say. Um like with Milwaukee in particular, um, everywhere you looked, like constantly there was the presence of the convention. Um, 
as far as attendance goes, um, you know, everyone talks about Portland as like the big retro gaming expo in the U.S. Um, and, and it is, uh, but I really feel like Milwaukee um, is right up there too. Um, and uh, the, you know, so it's it's nice that um, geographically there's something major like that um, closer, you know, to the Midwest and the East Coast for people. Um, but I wanted to also say with regards to the one that you were talking about in Tennessee, I mean, that's how these things start. Um, and it's good to get out there and support those uh, conventions that are just getting going uh, because it's us in the community that keep them going. Um, so even if they don't have uh, guests from out of town in the first couple of years, you know, it's good to, to just get out there and support them. And, and also it's like a completely different um, vibe, really. Uh, I think if you're going to your local convention, because uh, like here in Seattle, oddly, we don't really have a gaming convention in Seattle, despite the fact that we're in Nintendo's backyard, we're in Microsoft's backyard. Um, there's tons of game developers and companies that are all over the city, yet we have no real gaming convention. Um, we have PAX West, which is a major, like, kind of corporate, um, you know, convention, which, which is awesome. Um, and we're lucky to have that. And then we have, um, uh, there's one in a, in a suburb of Seattle called uh, Renton. That's the name of the city. And they do something, I think it's called like Renton, Renton City Retro or something like that. Um, and that one's kind of coming up. But what, what's cool about it is you have this like different network of people that you, you correspond, like a lot of my friends that are in the local like gaming community, you know, I know them very well because I know them in person, uh, but they're a different crowd than, than what you might, how you might like hang out and enjoy a show at, at a Portland or at a Milwaukee. It's just all different. So it's, it's cool to build those local connections as well. Um, and I would say if there's something like that coming up in your area, support it. I, kicked around the idea of trying to get my own, uh, start one of my own that's really gaming focused, you know, that's, uh, that would be something like this. So we'll see. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, that's a good topic. I've actually thought about what if there was something like that. And, um, I thought if there was something where we could actually make it more special where, you know, with a lot of the people we know, we could offer, imagine if there was like specific, almost like seminars available from people that are only going to be at a show like that is going to come from somebody within the industry that kind of knows the value of that and how to almost push that together. Like my idea was again, like something that, for example, you'd have a classroom where you could go in a session of where I would do something on a CRT or somebody like, you know, if you get lucky, you could have Voltar come in and do a console something. And but anybody, you know what I mean? Like something really cool like that would would I think do well. But it's hard. That's a lot to like invest into in a big idea, kind of. Yeah. Well, start out small. You yeah. Know, bring one or two people out if you can, or or just use your own like set of tools, what you have at your disposal, and like let it grow. Uh, we we'd kicked around the idea of of demoing, you know, discharging um, your CRT before you work on it and stuff like that. You know, obviously there's some like liability stuff that you have to consider. But if you were showing it and doing the the Bob disclaimer of you know the chances of you know are not zero and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, like you're saying, having like workshops, kind of like uh, you know they actually had one at uh, Milwaukee and I. Apologize, I don't remember who it was that was. Um, it might have been Game Dad, um, who has a YouTube channel. I'm pretty sure it was him. He was doing one where um, you would bring. It's like a Game Boy Advance, I think. You bring your own Game Boy Advance, and he'll have the kits there to mod it. And they were doing. I don't know what they were doing. Screen mods or consoleizing them, or, or they were doing something like that. But everyone that went into that. Um, that demo 
that workshop left with a fully modded um, Game Boy Advance. And, you know, it's like one of those things where you're going step by step through it. If you get stuck, you know, you have people there that can help you. So they had all the stations set up for everyone that um, wanted to to sit there and mod their uh, their console. So something like that, like you're saying, it's a little like tighter focused on what it is that we do uh, and our corner of this hobby would would I think do really well rather than just um, um, I don't know the the pop culture as a whole approach. Yeah, that's so that's that was the thing about the uh I noticed this show that I had been working with for years. It went from being like one kind of con to like a, a game con to video games to multi con because it's trying to draw in. They don't exactly know. They're getting a bunch of people and like one year they tried to do an outdoor DJ booth, but this is in like late october in tennessee at night and outside it's windy cold and rainy in october most of the times and even if it's dry it's usually chilly so it was it was a bad idea that night year so i give them kudos for like dropping some of those things and changing and trying and bringing in new people and uh, but the experience to me of going in there too and and actually getting to go and do um, like shows, it's almost like a stand-up comic routine or something. You get to see kind of how an audience, if you get one to show up to a class you're given, how they react, uh, what you could do differently. And then I know it's helped me because like the last one, I was able to go in and really do a um, a crazy hands-on one where I was, you know, just opened up the CRT and just spin the yoke around and, and mess with, you know, an image and people would just look at it and talk about it a little bit as a but because but the thing like you say is most of those situations are you get one hour to do the class maybe 45 minutes to an hour and then it's like it's got to be over so you can't even you can't make it too detailed a lot of times on the bigger cons but yeah maybe something where you have more time to sit down doing a whole course level of things yeah. that would be multiple hours it would be great. Um, basically, I think what, where a lot of this conversation uh, that we're having now comes from is the last couple of Retro Creates, which is um, basically a, a meetup of us um, in the case last year where we, um, uh, we, we basically it was the, the pre-show before uh, Retro World Expo, which is, I think, a great way to do it. Um, to have something like that where you're not like con like constricted to a panel because somebody else has to like come in in 30 minutes and you got to somehow cram uh, what normally takes you a couple hours to get through when you're doing this um, in your shop. You got to like condense it down um, like that and you, you don't get that interactivity um, to maybe do something where the schedule's um, not as densely packed and, and have that going on. It'd be great to get people like Shank out there and actually just start cutting some wee motherboards and you know yeah uh, it'd, yeah it'd be, it'd be cool to like watch him do it and see see kind of that setup process that he takes to like figure out you know mark everything out and, you know, figure out where he's going to cut and what he's going to do and sets you know what I mean all that kind of stuff I think kind of gets in people's heads about um, like you know how like you, you can plan something to death. I think a lot of people run into that who want to get into like modding something or, or, or doing whatever. It's like, I've got to have all these tools. I've got to have all this stuff. I'm not realizing that a lot of us just started out with the, the Kesker iron that, that Voltar showed us and just kind of sprinkled and added things from there, but you just got to get going. Um, so to like watch somebody do it and see like, oh really, you just need a couple of things and uh, you can get this project going watching somebody do it where you can stop and ask questions because, you know, as much as we try to anticipate questions when we're writing out a process, we don't think of some of the things we take for or for granted, rather. Um, you know what I mean? So that interactivity would be a cool approach to something like this. Um, 
I think we should do it. What do you think, Steve? Let's, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's yeah. Put this thing we'll see. Well, I mean, I've got a look, I've got locations, but again, it would be on the East Coast here. Yeah, and, that's fine. And uh, it's like most of the contacts in this kind of. Yeah, within group, a lot of people are in New York all. City area. And um, I don't, yeah, I don't know if that's why you're going there and starting from there for. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I, I haven't, I haven't gone to Brooklyn Video Games or or any of that stuff. And you know, I know a lot of the the crew, you know, the New York crew, um, but I haven't, I've never even been to New York in my entire life. So oh really? Excuse, yeah. Um, so I figure um, I, I mapped it out. If if I do go there, um, which I'm planning to do so. Uh, start out in New York and then I could go through Philadelphia and hit um, and then get to Connecticut. So I think that would be a good good little trip. So would you rent a car in New York or would you like take yeah. public transit? Probably, I'd rent a car and then just return it at the yeah. rental in Connecticut. Okay. That's what I did when I went to Milwaukee because um, earlier this year when I went to Milwaukee, I, um, Flew into Milwaukee, drove around the city, checked it out. But really, I went down to Chicago. Okay. Checked out the Chicago video game stores, met up with some people, um, spent the day at the HD Retrovision uh, lab and headquarters there, which was about 10% business and 90% me and Steve just playing video games <laughs> at the shop. Um, but a lot of fun. And, That's cool. Uh, I have not seen Steve since like the first time we all met back in pre-COVID at the uh, first was... meetup, which which is funny to like kind of reminisce I'm back on that yeah. hotel in the, the middle of nowhere it. almost, right? <laughs> yeah, that was a that was an interesting one because um, it was technically in Connecticut or excuse me, uh, Kentucky. It was like Cincinnati, so, Kentucky or something, yeah, right? Like right on the line. And, yeah. Uh, it, you'd go outside and look around and there was nothing around you. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was one burger place. <laughs> that was it. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was definitely kind of out there. But it was uh it was a cool it was a cool starting point, but I hadn't seen Steve since that uh first time. And a couple guys since then. So, um, I, but I imagine since you guys uh, do business together, you talk to them more often. Oh, I talk to to Nick the most, um, but I do talk to Steve pretty frequently as well. But like I say, even then, um, you know, it's mostly not about work stuff. Uh, when we get to chatting, it's just the same kind of nonsense we banter about on twitter but you know, <laughs> just be on a phone call or text or whatever what uh, yeah what uh what kind have you gotten any new uh now you know i used to talk to you more about crt stuff not so much the last i feel like six months what have uh have you been getting any new crts at all or just not even just just still got the stuff you have there at the shop in your house yeah um uh, like three or four uh, PVMs and BVMs. Um, don't remember the SKUs off of the top of my head, uh, but the ones I have um, are used for the 129X card and the 68X. Uh, but it, it does become this thing where you, it, well, you know, I mean, you, one leads to another, right? Um, so it's actually just over at. Um, Super G's house. He's the guy that does the um, G Comp and G Start switch, and he's got an amazing collection. Um, had no idea. Uh, he's a huge PS One guy. He's oh. got tons of PS One stuff, uh, and uh, like just really cool. Uh, like he's got a complete set, you know. Mm. And when I say complete, I mean every region, everything. Wow, you know? insane. Um, but he, he's got some um, different monitors that he's looking to sell. So I might be picking up a couple, at least one more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So big, just a big one or a small one? A couple small ones. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, I'd like to get something that I can put uh, up on my actual bench where I do a lot of my testing. Uh -huh. um, right next to, like, I used that one that Greg made that looks like a CRT. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I'd like yeah. to get something something up there in that kind of footprint size, like a 9-inch. Um, yeah. Or a large inch or something. Or a, a ridiculous, I mean, this. the funny thing is this 5-inch I'm working on is almost as... Whoops! Almost as long as a eight inch. It's so long, <laughs> and uh, just has that tiny screen, and it has this yeah. little this little kickstand, which is kind of cool and unique. Yeah, that, yeah, something like that. What kind of what kind of um, inputs does that have? Well, so there's the eight inch ones, which I've actually done. Like I've I've restored like three or four of them the last couple of weeks. A BVM one and a PVM one and but they have different inputs. This one only has composite RGB and component, so pretty limited. The other one would have like an S video input also. The eight yeah, inch ones. Be. Yeah. And then uh but see there's this other one that is the nine inch uh that is the L series, which is like nine L two, nine L three. Um those actually have some you could put in the in, the cards the 129x cards in those hmm. those run off the cards yeah so those might be a good one that. to get and they're actually newer they have full like menu and they it's like the same as the i think one of the ones that you bought from me a few years ago was the 14l or 20l2 i think yeah that's the one that's in my main um, setup. Okay. For actually, like, actually using. That's cool. Yeah. Get some more people saying hey in the chat. Hello, hello Felipe. Hello Bonnie, and hello to anybody else who's been jumping in. Uh, we've just been kind of chilling, talking about convention stuff. What's been going on with Ryan, and. Um, I think before we get too deep into things, I know Ryan's up against the time limit, so we'll let we'll just probably hang out and chat for like another couple minutes if that's okay with him, and then uh, we'll do the majority of the monitor stuff afterwards after we let him off. <laughs> but uh, yeah. so yeah, if there's anything else, I don't know if there's anything else. It's like um, that you have coming up that we should mention. I don't know. Um, you know, if you want, you're welcome to talk about it or say it. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, like we have, um, we do have another, uh, like retro bit release that we'll be announcing soon. Um, like this month we'll, we'll be announcing, uh, that's about as much as I can say about that. Um, you know, uh, but we do have some more stuff coming up like that. Um, people are, like I was saying earlier when we first got going, uh, people who are waiting on a uh, ballast collection that's showing up tomorrow. Okay. Um, so we're cranking out orders this weekend. Um, all all the, the pallets will arrive at our shop tomorrow, and you know it'll, it'll usually it's like the end of the day when they show up. So we'll just kind of get things set up. Um, when we when we do uh, like shipments like that, we actually reconfigure our shop entirely. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll be doing that tonight. Um, the the shop we have intentionally set everything up on wheels so all of the shelving all of them like you'll have like an eight foot long section of shelving just unlock the casters move it out of the way and we like set up like a huge production so you'll have like a couple aisles of product that just condenses down okay and we wheel in like this machinery to like it literally like bolts and tapes the boxes for you and all this stuff but it's the only way to get through orders like this because you know, there's just so many um, uh, of these. I'm talking about um, like the uh, the games primarily from like Retrobit, where you'll get literally thousands. Of, it's just the same order over and over and over and over again. Um, we have to kind of reconfigure the shop for it. So, so that's what I'll be doing uh, tonight and this weekend, and then. Because saying I'm going to the uh, licensing expo, which my main goal there is to work out partnerships with um, 
different brand IP owners, um, and it's literally everything you can think of. Every major brand is there. Um, you know, I mean, like everything you can think of, big to small, they're there, and uh, you can work out deals for um, using artwork. Um, on products, so for example, the Retro Game Restore and uh, Muramasa Yoi uh, like replacement console shells, um, the like the NES and the Super Nintendo ones, be bringing some of those to. We have some appointments to discuss what artwork could be used on some of those, and so you'll get some custom, like actually officially licensed. Um, branded replacement console shells. Uh, got a couple appointments that I made as follow-ups from last year's um, on some publishing stuff. So uh, working with people who are using tools like NES Maker, um, which you might recall was kind of across from me. Yeah, uh, I remember. Yeah, uh, really cool tool. If people don't know about NES Maker, they should check it out. Um, where uh, it, it kind of gives somebody who wants to make a game the tools necessary to, to do that, uh, specifically in that case for the NES. Um, you, you have to work your way through the tutorial and, like anything, learn how to use the software. Uh, but then after that, away you go. And uh, so we've had a few people come to the Rondo publishing option, uh, which is the wholesale kind of Different, it's you know it's the wholesale um, hesitate to say arm because it's actually technically a different company but it's the right. wholesale arm of like Castlemania yeah where I take a lot of these exclusive things that we've developed um, in partnership with people or on our own and uh, and we're producing those uh, for for distribution to game stores which is why for example I would go to New York and drive down really I'm hitting a slew of video game stores the whole way down to introduce Rondo to them. And that sure. Kind of thing. Understood. Uh, but with the Rondo Publishing, I'm working with um, Renee from DB Electronics mm -hmm. to develop, you know, properly built and designed PCBs for Genesis, SNES, Turbo Graphics 16, Mega Drive Genesis, all all, this, all these games, right? Um, to to basically do our own bit of publishing for more of the indie devs out there. And with that, um, we get a license from, uh, you know, a brand that makes sense for a game where it makes sense. You can palette swap over to it and do an official release of something. So that's some of my goals for, um, for the, uh, the show next week. That's pretty great. Uh, yeah. So let's. Uh, I got a couple of actually interesting questions here from the chat, and I thought yeah. we could go and uh, yeah, let's do it. hit some of these up real quick. Um, someone, Cody Dragon Root, asked, "Does Castlevania stock ever cave consoles? Ever? Do. You do? Um, we should have. I think we might have just sold out of the VS Premium." Okay. Which, uh, the, the VS is the actual console uh, that's meant to hook up your TV, uh, where you play like traditionally as a, like on a console. Right. Um, we should have the starter sets, and the difference between the starter and the uh, premium set is premium comes with two controllers instead of one, and also has two pack-in games where I think the starter doesn't. Um, but if we're out of those, we should be getting more. Um, okay. But I. Pretty sure we should have those, and we do have the EXP, which is their handheld in stock. I know that for sure. All right, and then brought them over. Cool. And uh, Felipe was asking if you had any updates on Time Sleuths, which is a question I actually do get yeah, sometimes. Yeah, Time Sleuths. Yep. Um, so we actually just got those back, and I just grabbed the shells for them out of our um, warehouse and brought them to the shop. Uh, so what happened on the time sleep, and Felipe probably got the email a few weeks back, um, we actually, they were built incorrectly. So we had to send them back to the fabricator, oh. have them rebuilt. Um, and sometimes that happens where it's something we can do. Um, we can fix it on the fly. Like I've had things where like a surface mount 
component was you know mounted backwards or whatever and i can desolder and solder it back in place myself um, faster than it would take to ship it back and forth in this case the fpga was rotated 90 degrees the wrong way and i mean that's like tons of little tiny pins that you do that you're gonna screw that up. i would screw that up so i just sent it back to the fab and had them redo it those just arrived back um so those are probably in the queue for today to be reflashed um if not tomorrow but um i would expect to see those shipping before next week because wow that's, that's right. okay cool yeah, that's one of the items i mean it doesn't take much to prep it it takes just less than a minute to flash them um and i'm not doing all that so it's not i don't do literally everything um, some of this is other people doing it um, so that'll be prepped and ready um and start shipping this week before we leave that's one of the items i have as a um like has to be done before i leave item all right, great. So that's good on that. Okay, now Master Safer asked, does Castlemania sell EverDrives yet? Is there any plan to ever sell EverDrives, you think? Uh, yes, we can sell EverDrives. Um, we have carried them in the past and actually do have um, some leftover stock that I could list right, right away um, from when we did stock it before. The, the problem with the EverDrives drive is they're expensive items with very low profitability so you have to like sink ten twenty thousand dollars into something and then wait three months to make a few hundred bucks so for me i'd rather sink that money into something that turns quicker and makes more sense financially because uh, it's not a um it's like oh you only it, the, the like go after things with higher profit it's when you sink all of that money into something like that you now can't sink it into other products so you have to kind of like pick and choose because there is a finite amount of money in the coffers right <laughs> so if i tie it all up in something like that then that means i can't go ahead and bring in like you know more make megahertz xbox kits or i can't produce another run of gc duels right away you know and those items are just a little a little more like um uh that's what people expect when they come to our store um it has been in my on my radar to, to bring in the everdrives though and when we do we'll probably at, just like we did before go with the um like they have all these iterations like they have the everdrive and then the x5 and then the x7 and then the x whatever like all these like tiers i just grab the the highest tier one generally and roll with that because that's the other thing um, when you look at the SKU count and you've got to bring in enough to not run out immediately and it's it's a big investment that uh just takes time but yeah we we will we will bring them in it's just um well, I think it's at the same time, like you said, no matter what almost size business you are just about, you are going to have a limit on what your company can really invest capital in. Uh, you know, you need to manage that to make sure that, like you said, you're not the the price of some of those items is so high. And then uh, I don't, I, you know, there's a lot of people who want these things. They say they want them, but I don't feel like it's probably something like you said. It takes months to recoup that money when, when in the, you know, you could in the same time use those funds to hopefully um, move things faster through your business, but also provide services that really are unique for your business. Yeah, like we've we've tended to focus more on mod kits, right? Than than things like that, um, and those take a lot of capital too. So I mean, it's just uh, and and like not everything makes a ton of money. Um, there are items that we do just as a pure like kind of pack. well, even like um, this last batch of juice cards, yeah, that we did that, and we're in the process of assembling right now. That was a break even, you know on those and i knew it going in so i'm not saying like i wouldn't make something like 
like I don't like live and die by that rule like every you know but sometimes it's like the G comp and and that has everything to do with the uh the parts shortage parts you know, shortage yeah uh, why the why the price is so high to produce those right now um but we were able to produce the G comp and and be profitable but we weren't able to do it with the G scart so I just made fewer of them than I wanted to I wanted to keep the product relevant. I know a lot of people were um, wanting them and asking for them. So we do do that kind of thing. Um, stuff we do with like Virtual Boy, you know, as much likes and as many retweets and things as it gets, it is a lower selling item. Um, you know, so we, we stay engaged on things that kind of like matter to me too, personally. Um, every chance I get to do anything with Master System, for example, I jump at. Um, you know, we're doing more with the Jaguar, which is super niche. Really? Um, that, that's but, yeah, niche. But, but we're doing stuff with Humble Bazooka, and it's not because that's like a banger of an item. Mm -hmm. It's just because I think it's cool, and I want to support products that don't get the huge support that like a Nintendo product might get, you know? Um, but yeah, we've, we've got to sort of like balance all of that stuff because you can't do everything for the sake of doing it you have to stay profitable or quickly find yourself not doing anything <laughs> yeah you know? i i can totally yeah imagine on and understand that completely so unrelated to any kind of stock or anything question this was for our both of us uh but i'll put it to you first this is what is your favorite or what are some of your favorite games and why and uh i don't know if that has anything to do with the name of castlemania anywhere or if that is just so, a cool not not involved <laughs> i'll start with that um so castlemania is just a cool nod obviously to castlevania um it is a game i enjoy playing but i wouldn't say it's my favorite game or anything like that it just happened to be a, a name that i could make kind of work and it popped in my head that way so like as far as um my favorite games go on the nes um the first kind of two that come to mind are, are rygar um and metroid um now rygar is is um, always going to be like at the top of my list because when i got the nes um, for the first time, we went into Toys R Us and uh, we got the NES, and they only had the like I can't remember what to call it. It's like the challenge set or whatever it was. It's just the 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 system and a controller. That's it, no game. And so my mom said, "Well, you can get one game. You guys pick just one game." And you know, at the time, uh, so this is '88, probably. I think I was seven. We're just looking at the box art, and I saw the Rygar box art, and uh, I was like a big Key Man fan, you know. So I just see this like Key Man looking like guy, sort of looked like he could fit in that universe. I'm like, that's the one. That's what we're getting, you know. And I, I remember kind of having to like get my brothers to roll with me on this, you know. <laughs> and so we got home, and and Rygar was the game. So for me, that'll always be like top of mind. Um, but I also remember when one of my neighbors came over and you get, you get the, uh, the Nintendo, the NES, like everyone's kind of coming over from the neighborhood and like bringing their games, you know? And uh, one of my friends bought Metroid and it just blew my mind. I was just like, I had no idea. Um, I guess I don't know what I was expecting, but it, uh, Metroid was just, I just remember sitting there and, I, and it felt like the world was so big um, in that game and exciting that um, that that's probably, Rygar and Metroid, I, I play through every year for sure, um, typically around Christmas uh, for both of them. In fact, I typically play most gaming in the winter. Um, in the summer, I go hiking and do other things like that outside of work. Um, as far as modern games, just to answer it from both ends of the spectrum, um, as far as modern games go, a uh, game series that I every release get, a uh, couple of them. Um, Far Cry is probably my favorite like 
of the, like open world style games that come out. Um, Ubisoft gets kind of a bad rap for like, oh, big world with a bunch of waypoints on it, you know, where it's like all these small activities. But for me, that's perfect because I can kind of come in and out of playing that game and I don't really lose track of where I was because there's all these pins on the map and I can just keep exploring. Um, so I like that game. And then also uh, always play the Call of Duties every year when they come out. Okay. But I, but I only strictly the campaign. I don't do the like uh, multiplayer stuff. Yeah. I, I think that's it. Just I don't do it. All right. What are your answers, Steve? Well, you know, I would go closer. I, I would go on like my my uh, experience would be closer towards the end of an era of gaming. I have a good fond memory of this one. Would have been uh, Super Nintendo, about ninety five. So I would have been oh eleven ish this time, and I had helped my one of my best friend at the time move his parents or his mom and his grandma moved to this house from where they lived in an apartment next to us and i remember i helped them all week and their gift was they took me to this store that was called media play which doesn't exist anymore and it was like this huge warehouse style of like best buy pre best buy almost and they said I could get any game in there, and I, I still only had, like, the Super Nintendo. And I went in, and I grabbed Chrono Trigger on the box. And I just because I looked at it, at first off, I was like, she said any game. And it was the most expensive game. It was like it was like 10 or $20 more than the other games that were Super Nintendo games. So it, you know, this is 95, so there weren't a ton of them left out all over the place. And... Uh, I just remember seeing that. I had no idea what it was, but it was expensive, and it had where you could be a frog on the cover with a sword. And I was like, I got to try this game out. And uh, like that was really the first time I'd ever played any kind of an RPG or anything like that. So that was a really fun experience. I remember like playing it forever and like getting stuck in places and leaving the game for a while and coming back and finally getting through it. And... That's probably one of the ones I still have a huge fond memory of. I did go back probably three years ago and fully beat it every, like, all the way where you get all the weapons according to the guide. Because none of that, that was a funny thing about stuff, too. You get games before, and you'd, if you wanted to, you'd have to try to hunt down a strategy guide, physical copy somewhere, right? Maybe you could yeah. order one somewhere, but it wasn't as easy, nearly as easy as it is now. To even figure out what was going on in the game a lot of times. Yeah, you could just get stuck. Yeah. You know, in those games. So, so that's, that's a, an interesting answer because I, I, I've never played that game. Yeah. You know, and I know it's one of those ones that is heavily, you know, it's regarded as like one of the, the better games um, of that era. I did play Final Fantasy 2 or Final Fantasy 4. Okay. If you want to call it when it came out and that was i mean as far as super nintendo time frame goes because i played the original final fantasy on the nes and that was a huge i mean it, and at that point you're like a little more into the the like whole like what i was talking about before with Rygar and, and metro those were like my introductions uh to gaming um but like once you got into it, I remember playing Final Fantasy, and and we did have the strategy guide. We had the um, the Nintendo Power official strategy guide, um, and I think that might have been before other companies were even making third party strategy guides. Could be wrong. And then the um, when the Super Nintendo came out, Final Fantasy two came out pretty quick, if I recall. Um, also, the only RPG that I ever level ninety nine to all my characters. Um, <laughs> but that that one's one that I I've completed Final Fantasy two. Like, I, I can even guess like a dozen times at least, um, and I've even played through some of the ROM hacks, you know, of it. So that's that's one where I'm like. That's one of my favorite games, and it's my favorite of the series. Um, I have played Final Fantasy VI, 
that's going to be most people's answer. Uh, for me, it's four. Uh, but I haven't played Chrono Trigger yet, so I know I need to, to make that happen. I did play Secret of Mana during that time, though. See, and that's the thing, like, Chrono Trigger, I only learned about Chrono Trigger after the fact, like, getting back into gaming again. Um, yeah, because I've been, like... like taken... It's 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 yeah. like that age where I think that you fall off. I mean, I think you're probably it sounds like a couple years older than me. So it's like again, we're going through these phases of like I went and gamed like almost to ninety eight and then I fell off where I kinda got later into high school, college, kinda took a break yeah. from the majority well. I mean, I still did game, but it wasn't like that was everything kind of you know what yeah. you were concerned about <laughs> yeah for me um i played uh i was regularly playing video games all the way through high school um through my senior year um and so i graduated in uh, 99 and um you know that's when ps1 was out i was playing like metal gear solid and parasite eve um, legend of Lagaya, like these games that i remember as ps1 games that stand out in my mind um, but right after that, right, like right after high school, I think, you know, like I set up gaming setup. And, and actually, interesting, I was like collecting NES. I started collecting NES um, from pawn shops around that time in 99, 2000. Um, but pretty quickly, it just turned, t took a backseat to other things in life. I was um, in bands and doing music pretty much full time and going to college and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't get back in uh, after PS1. Like I did get a GameCube uh, on launch, but you know, it's one of those things where I was just too busy doing other things. I wanted to, my, my habits were still there to, to be <laughs> interested in it, but I didn't have the time to do it. So. I think after I bought the GameCube, I missed like the PS3, Xbox 360 era completely. Um, and uh, really the whole GameCube, PS2 era, I missed most of that. And then I got into it after the fact. So I bought an Xbox 360. Um, that's my like getting back into gaming console. I got a lot from somebody for a hundred bucks, and it was like a 360 airport like, controllers and a box of games for a hundred bucks. Um, and in that lot was the um, it's brand new. It just come out was a 2013 um, Tomb Raider. And so that that's what kind of pulled me back in was that Tomb Raider uh, reboot that they did, which was amazing. So I played all those games, and that just kind of sucked me back in. At that point it is that's an interesting thing that most of us i think do go through and it's almost like the same exact age it's it's not so i graduated in 2001 and um we played a lot of me and my buddies i remember played a lot of n64 for those years until um you know playstation one was a thing but i think more we were still messing around in the uh, mostly on the N64 for like multiplayer reasons, and yeah, yeah. and uh, we're really into all the multiplayer games, like anything on there. And then um, I remember I had one really really rich friend that was allowed to go launch night to get a PlayStation Two, and yeah. I remember we got that after a crazy things happened, which I've told that story before. I won't tell that again, but the uh, we got the PlayStation two and it, I worked at like Walmart at the time in high school, like part time. And I was calling in sick to Walmart to just go sneak yeah. over to my friend's house. And I remember yeah. playing like Tony Hawk on the PlayStation two. Cause it was so amazing. And then I sucked. I stayed around a little bit in the Xbox OG and that PlayStation 2 era in the first couple of years of college because we had another guy who knew how to modify the OG Xbox like way back in the day. And we all yeah. did that and got emulators on there. And that's how we played a lot of old school games in college. We still do that through that machine. And uh, But like you said, then it was like there was this 
the last three probably years of college when you're you know after the freshman year i just started getting into other things took off gaming completely yeah. until i got my job out of college and i went over to like another guy who i had graduated school with and had a similar job title as me in a different part of the country and he showed me this huge flat screen tv with an xbox 360 playing on it and it was like Ge the original gears of war and i was just yeah. like what the heck is this right it's like high uh, definition yeah. you're like so yeah, that, really, that blew me away and made me have to get a 360 right after yeah. that. Yeah, I feel like that was a huge leap that 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 era, and we're getting fewer and fewer of those like jaw dropping leaps, right? Like if at all, like I, we might be at the the peak here where it just how much better can it really get, you know? Which is why they're going after these like gimmicky approaches of like doing VR and AR and stuff like that, which is cool. It it really is cool. Um, for some games, but I don't think that's going to be a platform for gaming like, as a as a whole. Um, one VR game though that I would highly recommend is Tetris Effect. If you never played um, PSVR? That is the game that I think best demonstrates it, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it's around that that era when you're like kind of like. And for me too, that that led into like starting a family and stuff like that, and uh, which is kind of also what happened. You know, like you your kids start to get a little older, and you want to show them some of this stuff, and that, that'll pull you back in as well. Yeah, for that sure. that definitely does. Like the moment you try to either introduce your kids to some games, and you're of course you know going to think of what you liked probably to try to show them yeah. in and. Um, I recently went and visited my younger siblings at my mom's house over the weekend with my family. And I took the N64 back then because that's all they really cared about. And like my sister, my younger sister, a couple years younger than me, she could still like mop the floor with the entire family at Mario Kart. Oh, really? Wow. And I just can't believe it. Like she still remembers the best route to go on all the tricky courses where it's like that yoshi course where there's 100 it doesn't tell you who's in first everything's a question mark it's so it, it was yeah, it, but it was a lot of fun to bring everybody together and then it's like wow you know people always rag on the n64 for things which is rightfully so but at the same time it's just fun i think to have a uh, nostalgic uh kick on that there's some great, there's some great games on 64 um i think the games that stand out in my mind uh I mean, the first one that comes to my mind when, when I think of, like, games I'd want to play on the 64 is Star Fox. Um, and that one, I actually do feel like I remember the different ways to cause, you know, there's, like, three different routes you could take. And I knew how to, like, to do all that. Um, that was that was a game that I played quite a bit. Um, but you, you got me thinking about something else. Um, you know, like, in, in that first kind of chapter of gaming before you, like, take a break, you know, there wasn't like a, a modding scene that I was aware of, um, you know, and I know people were modding PS1s. Uh, I don't know if that happened after the fact or, or what, uh, but what we did have was a plug and play uh, peripheral called Goldfinger. And I don't know if anyone in the chat knows what that is, but it, it plugged into um, the serial port on the back of your PS1. And then you could burn a copy of a game to a CDR, and you had to do the thing where you like started yeah. with the system with like a regular game, and then once you saw the splash screen, open it, swap the discs, and then shut it back real quick. Um, <laughs> that we did have, and and that was my first introduction to, to anything like that. Um, so that that was fun, and you wind up with the stack. Of games. Someone the does. Like, Some people are saying they did have gold fingers. That's funny. Yeah, so. yeah, that's so funny. Like, kind of like, um, I think when you unlock like whole entire ROM sets and put them on on things like, I, I don't personally do that. Um, you know, like on my my X station, for example, I literally just have the games that I have on the X station for convenience. Um, and part of the reason is too is like when you have this huge list, like kind of learned this when Napster came out. And, all this other stuff it's like you have so much to choose from that you 
it's like Netflix now. You wind up scrolling around and never picking anything. Yeah, that's that's a great point, and it's it's hard. I think you do do yourself a disservice, and then you you're like, oh, I don't know what to pick. I never end up picking anything, almost kind of thing. Yeah. So what what I what I really like about um, some of these options that we have now with like EverDrives and, and different uh, ODEs is the um, is the patches that you can apply to games and, and play them differently. Like I was talking about with Final Fantasy IV. They have different ROM hacks that you can apply to the game, or you can listen to it with different like music, like symphony music now, right? Or you can play like a, an extended version or change aspects of the game. That's kind of like what interests me uh, personally and how I use these. You know, is, is some of the, the ROM hacks and things like that that people do. That's fun. Yeah, that's. Um... My kid, my my son likes. He's he's eleven. He likes to try different ROM hacks on the EverDrive cartridges for like Super Mario. He'll just sit there and try them forever, which I think is funny. It's stuff I've never tried, but he he does actually get into some of them, and some of them can be uh, pretty crazy and creative. Yeah, some of some of those ROM hacks are really good. Um, like on Mario, the Mario Three Nix. I don't know if you've ever played that, but that's a really, think really so. good one. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I remember seeing, so I remember I had a friend who was always trying to come up with some way to, like, get games you know try to figure out a way this is like so pre-mod it's so he'd always be trying to find something and i remember when we found the guy who could he was a guy this was a guy we went to high school with but he had to uh we always thought he was like super like straight laced never got any trouble kind of smart but he our senior year he got a girlfriend who was like a year younger than us and within a couple months, she was pregnant. And we we're always like, whoa, oh. goodness, we didn't like, I mean, I was like, what? And uh, she, so he like finished night schools to graduate early. And he went and immediately started working for the cable company. And you could go talk to him and he would he knew how to modify these xboxes too and i just remember yeah. because like i've seen him i've seen him later on and him and the girl are they're still together right they're which is great they have family but they have uh -huh. like they have grown kids and like grandkids now and i'm like oh, dude yeah. you're like whoa i thought like having young kids is crazy but he's already on like grandkids yeah so, uh, but it was funny. That well, was the first, I mean, that was the first real anything with modifying. I remember we try to, you know, get things to work on the computer, like, you know, pirated software. That was always the thing, but that Xbox was kind of the first thing we had that actually worked. Well, I mean, the Xbox is essentially a computer and there's a lot of familiarity, I think, for people in that where they can... I mean, I won't pretend to know what goes into it, you know, because uh, I have no idea. But I, I feel like uh, these these other systems we have do like a little more reverse engineering. Not to say that you don't with, with Xbox, but to kind of like figure out like how does this thing do what it does and how can we exploit it? You know, I have a lot of fun watching the um, modern vintage gamer um, movie or uh, movies the the little um, videos that he does where like he'll say like um, mistakes were made or whatever yeah. and he'll show an, expo an exploit was found on a, on a console you know um, it's funny because some of that stuff goes a, a little well, you're still enjoying the, the the breakdown all the same so. yeah that's it's a it's interesting some of those ways those early like breaking those early systems the way it was done it's really cool <laughs> it does have a great way of putting it the NS chip like people were like clipping a leg on on the chip yeah so that it yeah you know, like how do you figure that out right <laughs> somebody figures that stuff out uh, so. well ryan i know that we're coming up 
towards the time when you said you were uh, yeah. getting ready to go to another meeting. I really appreciate you um, spending this time with us and coming on today. Yeah. I thank you a lot. And if uh, if anybody has any questions or basically if you want to go, you, I know you can follow Ryan on Twitter for yeah. sure. You can get on his newsletter list so you can be up to date on anything right that you guys have coming out. You guys do yeah. have that newsletter. It comes out once a month, yeah. right? Once a month is the plan. Um, okay. I did miss a couple of months, uh, but I try not to do more than once a month. I try to like yeah. respect people's privacy and and um, try to I try to do marketing in a like as least invasive way as possible. Um, you know, like we do offer like some kind of invasive tools like push notifications and things like that, which I reserve specifically for. Hey, there's 30 copies of Wiley Wars, you know? <laughs> so yeah, kind of like it, last chance. Ultra invasive like that, yeah. I'll reserve it for emergency announcements. Uh, other than that, just a monthly newsletter, I think, covers basically everything. Yeah, and if you need stuff, you go check out his store online, Castlemania Games. And uh, again, thanks. Great always to hang out. And uh, I'll talk to you yeah, behind absolutely. the scenes later on, but I'll let you go. I appreciate your time. Thanks again, Ryan. We'll get this, we'll get this uh, convention planned out. Yeah, that's what we need to do. I know. I need to somehow sneak up to either New York and see you too and sneak in that time yeah. when you're up there. I really want to go, but I just don't know how. <laughs> All right, buddy. I'm going to hang up on you, and I'll stay on the show. But thanks again, and uh, have a good rest of the day. All right? Yeah, All right. Great. Excellent. So... Thanks again, everybody, for being patient with that. We got to work out. And uh, I appreciate everybody for coming in. It looks like uh, we got almost an hour and a half here on a stream. And I'm sorry that I actually didn't get time to really service this. When I had Ryan on, I kind of wanted to use the time to uh, get, you know, a chat with him and have his opportunity. So I'm going to probably change the name of the stream, obviously, after so it could re-upload and it won't say it's a PVM 5-inch rebuild. I'll have to come back and do that, obviously, tomorrow or something. Uh, because now i got to go pick up the car and see how those tires went out. But we could do this another time. I guarantee you we'll get it all worked out. That's not a problem. Thanks again to Ryan. Now, I know somebody was asking a lot about um, customer service, being pretty vague. I really didn't want to bring that up. If you have a customer service issue, I know Ryan has a customer service team, and you can go to his website and get more information on how to contact them. I don't know um, the ins and outs of a specific, of course, transaction. And, uh, you know, I wanted to stay more on stuff that was more relevant for everybody but i do know that he has customer service there so if you want to check that out you can thanks again to ryan thanks again to everybody for staying and hanging out if you want to go back and rewatch the stream after about the first eight minutes is when i get ryan finally on the line and we chat for a good hour and 20 minutes but uh that's going to do it for today folks i'll uh, come back and we'll we'll do this five inch stream some other time and uh, we'll let today's stream just be this thanks again for watching 